Now, if you've done chemistry before, you've probably studied about bond angles of various molecules. You might have came across molecules like carbon dioxide, which has got a linear shape and a bond angle of 180 degrees. Or you might have came across molecules like sulfur hexafluoride fluoride which has got an octahedral shape and bond angles of 90 degrees or you might have seen a molecule like methane which has got a tetrahedral shape and bond angles of 109.5 degrees i mean it might seem like such a random number why is the bond angle 109.5 degrees but in fact, there is actual mathematical proof behind why the bond angle is whatever it is. And there's many ways you can prove the bond angle of methane. But today I'm going to be talking about three of them, all of which involves vectors. You see, if we let the carbon atom, the black thing here, be at the center, be at the origin, we can describe where each of the hydrogen atoms are going to be in that molecule of methane or CH4. And the location of each of these hydrogen atoms with respect to that carbon atom at the center could be represented in terms of vectors. So in this case, we'll be working with four vectors where each vector represents the position of each of the hydrogen atom, each of the white balls, with respect to the black carbon atom atoms so going from the carbon to the hydrogen that bit can be considered a vector and so could that bit and so could that bit and so could that bit there and from these four position vectors that i've described to you there are two further assumptions that we can make firstly the four bonds in methane are bonding the carbon atom in the center to another hydrogen atom which is around the carbon atom and for the methane molecule all these four bonds are identical since they're bonding the two same types of atoms together and all the atoms that they're bonding are in pretty much the same conditions as each other. And so these bonds are approximately the same size. And since the vectors are just representing the bonds in a way, all these four vectors that I've described to you earlier are all going to be the same magnitude, or at least so in our model. And secondly, this system of atoms are rearranged in some certain way so that the molecule itself is rather stable. The hydrogen atoms wants to rearrange themselves around the carbon atom in some certain way so that the forces of attractions on the carbon atoms all cancel each other out. Which is kind of why the hydrogen atoms itself rearrange in a tetrahedral structure to begin with. And since all the force of attractions from the hydrogen atoms on the carbon atoms are going to cancel each other out, we could also kind of translate this into our little vector model so that all the four vectors are all going to cancel each other out. And so basically what I've said so far is we can think of all the four bonds between the carbon and hydrogen atom as being vectors that goes from the carbon atom to each of the individual hydrogen atoms. And also we can assume that all of these vectors will be of the same magnitude and all of these vectors will in fact cancel each other out. And from these assumptions I've stated so far, we can go into proving why the bond angle of methane or of any tetrahedral molecules equals 109.5 degrees. And as I've mentioned, there are in fact three ways of doing this, which will involve this same assumption. Now the first way that you can use to find the bond angle of methane is to simply just break down each of these four vectors into x, y and z components and then just simply find the angle of the vectors using dot product. Okay so we need to break down the vectors into x, y and z components. Remembering the two assumptions that we made earlier that all the vectors are going to be of the same magnitude and all the vectors are going to cancel each other out. So first we need to determine the x, y and z components of each of the vectors. Remembering the assumptions that we've made earlier. All these four vectors here 
needs to have the same magnitude. So let's just set the magnitudes of each of these vectors to all equal to one. And the second assumption we made is that all these vectors must cancel each other out. So that means this x component of all these vectors must add up to zero, and so will the y component, and so will the z component. So we need to keep those two things in mind, and we can try to break down each of the vectors into its three components. And so to keep things really simple, we can just assume one of the vectors to simply be pointing upwards in the z direction. And so for this one vector, its z component is going to have a magnitude of 1. It's just going to have the z component, its x component 0, its y component 0, and its z component is going to be 1, and it has got a magnitude of 1, which works. So what about all the other three vectors? As you can see, since what this one vector that we've set is going upwards with a magnitude of 1, all these other three vectors going down will also have to go down with a total magnitude of 1 in the z direction. And if you consider the geometry of a tetrahedral molecule, you'll see that all these three vectors are in fact going down by the same amount. So all of these three vectors that are pointing down will have a z component of minus a third. And so this works, this one vector is going up with a z component of one and all the other three vectors are going down with a z component of minus a third. And if you look at all the z components of all these four vectors, you can see that they in fact do cancel each other out to give nothing in the net z component. So now we just look at the other three vectors. So and to make life even simpler, let's assume that one of these vectors is in the x z plane. This means that this vector won't have any y component and its y component will just be zero. And for that vector, its magnitude in the z direction is minus a third and its magnitude in the y direction is zero. And since we know that the magnitude of the vector as a whole is going to be one, we can work out the magnitude in the x direction using Pythagoras' theorem. And so by taking numbers, putting in the equation, we find that the magnitude of that vector in the x direction should be the square root of 8 over 9. And now we know the x, y, and z components for two of the four vectors. We could just go on and work out what the other two vectors are going to be, but in fact, using the two that we already have, it should be enough. And so knowing two of the vectors that are involved in our model, we can go ahead and find the angle between those two vectors using the dot product. Now, if you don't know what dot products are, you can check this video out, which I've made about two or three years ago. Well, I was so young in that video, honestly. But if you do know what it is, then we'll just go on. The dot product of the two vectors equal to the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the cosine of the angle in between. And so by working out the dot product of these two vectors, we find that equal to one times one, which are the magnitudes of both of the vectors, times cosine of theta, where theta is the angle between those two vectors, or this angle here. But there's an alternate way of finding dot products, and that's just to multiply the x components of the two vectors together, and the y components of the two vectors together, and the z components of the two vectors together, and add them all up. And by doing this method, we find that the dot product of the two vectors come out to minus a third. And so we have a little equation here. Cosine of theta equals to minus a third because those two are just the dot products between these two vectors found in two different ways. And now we just simply have to solve for theta. Theta is going to be the inverse cosine of minus a third. And guess what that comes out to? That's right, 109.5 degrees, which is the answer that we've known from, you know, wherever we've found out from. Me, me from my chemistry teacher, you maybe from someone else, I don't know. So that's one way you could go around proving the bond angle of methane. But there are two other methods, as I mentioned, and the second method involves a cube. Oh, shit, wait. Oh, God, my cubes are falling apart. My cubes are actually falling apart. One second. <laughs> now, if you have a cube like this, and you connect the white clay, which are in the opposite corners up there and down there, you will get a tetrahedron. And so you could imagine having the carbon atom right in the center of that cube, and all the hydrogen atoms being located 
you know, at the corners of the cubes as I described earlier, or as you can see in this image right here. And now you can really easily figure out each of the four vectors. If you take the carbon atom to be right at the origin, or at zero, 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 then the four hydrogen atoms will have coordinates of one minus one, one, minus one, 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 minus one, and minus one, minus one, minus one. And by having some sort of coordinates for each of the four hydrogen atoms with respect to the central carbon atom, taking that carbon atom to be at the origin, we can give each of the four hydrogen atoms some sort of position vector. And in fact, all of these vectors will have the same magnitude of square root of three. And if you work it out, we'll actually cancel each other out. And so figuring out each of the four vectors this way is actually much simpler than what we were doing before. You just have to know that it related to the cube in the ways that I've described. And now we can just do the exact same thing as we did before. Work out dot product between two of the vectors and then just simply try to find the angle between the two vectors. And so simply we could work out the dot product by multiplying the magnitudes of the two vectors and then timesing it by cosine of theta, that comes out to three cosine theta. And then you can work out the dot product by multiplying each of the components with each other, and that comes out to minus one. And then you can let these two equal to each other. Three cosine theta equals to minus one, cosine theta equals to minus one third, and you know what comes after. And so there, that's two methods of finding the bond angle of methane, both involving working out what each of the vector is and then just using the dot product. But the third way, we don't actually need to work out each of the individual vector. We don't actually need to know, you know, what the components of each of the vectors are. And here's how we do it. Remember one of our assumptions is that all of the vectors cancels each other out. So basically, since they're all vectors, we can add them together. And if we add all the four vectors together, we will get zero. We'll get a vector which has got zero in its x components, got zero in y components, and has got zero as a z component. So now I'll set up an expression that looks a bit like this. This expression is just simply the dot product between these two things, where both of these things are the same, and they're just the sum of all the four position vectors of the hydrogen atoms. And so what we could do now is we could just find the dot product of this sum of vector. We will find the dot product between a plus b plus c plus d and a plus b plus c plus d. As I've discussed earlier, since all the vectors cancel each other out when I add them together, a plus b plus c plus d will just give you a vector with zero as all of its components. And if you find the dot product of that, you'll just get zero. Now, one property of the dot product is that it's distributive, which means that you can distribute the dot product the same way that you distribute, you know, a simple algebraic equation looking a bit like this. You can foil it, and so for this big expression, you can also multiply them out to make it look a bit like this. Now, currently, it does look a bit like a mess, but trust me, by the end, it's going to be absolutely fabulous. Now, out of the 16 terms on the left-hand side, 12 of them are dot products between two different vectors. Basically, they're just dot products of two of the four vectors against each other. And we know that the dot product between two different vectors on this molecule just equal to the magnitude of one of the vector times the magnitude of the other vector times the angle in between. And if we just let the magnitude of each of these four vectors equals to one for simplicity's sake, we find that the dot product between two different vectors in this case will come out to cosine of theta. And since there's 12 of them, we have 12 cosine theta. And what are the other four dot products? Well, they're just basically dot product of the same vector. And what does this mean? This means that the two vectors are pointing in the same direction. The angle between them is going to be zero. So cosine of zero is one. And so we find the dot product of two vectors which have got the same magnitude and in the same direction, we find that the dot product between those two will just be one times one times cosine of zero, which is one. So it just comes out to one. And since we have 
four dot products between the exact same vector, we will have plus four. And so now on the equation, we've got 12 cosine theta plus four equals to zero. And guess what do we do next? We just simply rearrange the cosine theta. We move 40 to this side, we divide both sides by 12, we get cosine theta equals to minus one third, and you can do the rest. And so that's it. That's three ways to prove that the bond angle of methane is 109.5 degrees. <laughs> it, I broke the molecule. Oh God, let's hope there's no mistakes. Oh no. Oh, guess I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.